No one, no one knows. No one, no one knows. We all woke up in the upside down, turning inside out like we've all been led astray. We've been standing on the outside and trying to find our friends like we're all just cast away. Feel like we've been missing out. Cute and dandy until 9 11 happened, basically. And it was also you know, 1999, 2001, when the internet was becoming what it is. And mm -hmm. everyone for the first time in the world was able to have access to information. And um, before this, you couldn't get occult books easily. Um, a lot of people don't like, I, I, I don't love having books. <laughs> We're going to talk about um, the Tom Riddle's diary in the second book here pretty soon. But like, there are scary books. There are cursed books. There are books that you don't want to lay hands on and you don't know which ones they are necessarily. And it's not so much the topics, but especially the, when being signed in to be president, that was a good book. We loved that one. That was a good one? scary one. When we watched Homie get signed in as president and they brought out that gigantic, scary yeah. Bible thing. And we were like, what is that? That was creepy, right? So yeah, there's bad books and they're like bound in human leather, basically. Like yeah. there's yeah. bad books out there. And that's where a lot of the occult learning up until 1999 was went through. And you got a lot of Lovecraft and you got a lot of this darker magic, Aleister Crowley. And that's like all you could get your hands on. But then the internet came out. So now, and Elon Musk has, I don't, you know, again, no idols. I don't like him, but he has told everyone like, you guys have, ev you guys have all the information at your fingertips and like, you guys aren't using it. And what he means by that is we literally have all the, <laughs> we have all the knowledge with yeah. internet. So I will beg to differ that everyone became witches and wizards after 9-11-2001 because they gave this information, this Hogwarts information was given to the public. And there was a thousands of people massacre in return for this information. So mm -hmm. a lot of what we talk about, um, I did a New Year's Eve special with like a bunch of people once. And I was like, you know, Nicholas Flamel is like real, like not only Nicholas Flamel being real, but like he worked with governments and it's out there if you can look far enough but if you look up nicholas fell mail nowadays it just pulls up harry potter so not only did we get all this information at our fingertips they told us it was fiction and they're like no that's just harry potter what are you talking about no he was a real person and his name is on old ledgers of actual like british and u.s intelligence so it's not just like he was someone and then you this whole this whole book harry potter and the philosopher's stone is about Nicholas Flamel's stone uh, that allows metals to be turned into gold, any kind of metal. So it can just be like tin or aluminum and you can turn it into gold. And then also if you have possession of this stone, you can live forever. And that is the sorcerer's stone, the philosopher's stone. Um, and that's what this entire movie is about. So um, there's no way to talk about magic also without going into Scotland. Um, we covered this in my last video. Let me show you guys because I'm talking about all the videos we've done up till now. So really quick, rickyleaks.com is where all my stuff is. If you just scroll down on the very first page, baby rabbit holes is cures. And the reason I talk about cures, um, minerals, herbs, oxidizers, and carbon, this mm -hmm. will heal any disease known to man. It might take like a year. I know a lot of people want quick and easy stuff. No, it's yeah. going to be like six months to a year. You are 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. You have 20, 40, 50, 60 years of toxins in you. It's not just going to go away overnight. So be kind to yourself and you can check these out. Also, I talk about cures first because you won't understand any of this stuff if you don't have a clear gut. If you have nasty stuff in your gut, look up parasites cause psychosis. Look up parasites cause fear. You won't be able to even learn about this stuff if you haven't cleansed. And that goes into baptism. When we're talking about magic, when we're talking about Merlin even. Merlin was half human, half incubi. He 
was a quite literally a demon child until he was baptized. And I think baptismal baptism has a lot to do with which kid gets the um gets the magic gene. And if you ask me, no, I do not want you to run to your nearest church and get baptized. Heck no, but I do want you to drink a drink of water that clears your whole body. So if you throw some hydrogen peroxide in some water, this will clear you like a baptism. So that's where we go into, you have to cure yourself before you start learning stuff. And then I have all my videos. I don't give a F about aliens. Let's talk about parasites. <laughs> my oldest video, Defense Against the Dark Arts. We cover um, how to defend yourself against all this dark magic. I was on Journey to Truth a few times where we cover vampires and parasites, magic in real life, witches. Um, I did I Am Affirmations and the Second Amendment, which is probably our strongest yes. power that we don't utilize. Everyone thinks the Second Amendment is guns. No, it's the right to form a militia. Dumbledore's army would not have been legally allowed to be closed down and if, if, if it was in America, okay? So I am affirmations are going to be probably the most magic anyone can do starting with nothing, basically. What's um, funny is the, the uh, Umbridge, Dolores Umbridge, a Death Eater, who to me has always invoked this Hillary Clinton-esque oh, vibe. Yeah. And of course, she was the one that started implementing all of these Orwellian rules at Hogwarts and that she was just like the uh, the in for the Death Eaters. Like she was just she just breached Hogwarts with this like pretty sort of non-threatening persona. And yet um, it was she was the one that took it upon herself to shut down Dumbledore's army. Of course, it would be the Clinton cartel, the Clinton syndicate. She is the best written villain. I have ever seen. I <laughs> she is the most realistic villain. Um, and this is something that Harry Potter covers very, very well. People who are super nice are the assholes that you want to know. Because in the second one, which this one's covering the second one too. Um, what's his name? <coughs> uh, the Professor Lockhart. Yeah. Lockhart. Okay, so he's very nice. He's wonderful. He's charming even. And he's a load of shit. He's the person that literally these people saw on Travel Channel. Like the equivalent of Travel Channel and History Channel to these people. That was Lockhart. And he was getting all of these stories that were not his. And he was making them seem like he did all this crazy stuff. And he didn't know anything. And it shows when you're actually put to test. Like, okay, that's cool that you lied to Travel Channel. Now, you know, fix this kid's arm. It's a basic spell and he messes up. But yeah. he's really nice. And same with Umbridge. She's literally the best villain in the entire fiction universe, if you ask Umbridge's me. Umbridge's mother and brother were muggles. <gasps> and the, she was born to a muggle mother and the father was a magical wizard. Okay. And so she went to live with her father and she never saw her muggle mother or muggle brother ever again. So again, it comes from this, like this hate, almost like a, a really deeply internalized, like, I, I guess you call it racism or just, I don't know exactly what you would call it. Cause it's more than race it's DNA, you know, it's, yeah. it's just a genetic thing, but um, I, her hate again, it's like a village and origin story comes down to the mother and the father she just like hates muggles. So she like was disgusted by her mother and her brother because they were non-magical. Oh, wow. That's sad. And there, I will say I feel a little bad for her and we'll get to this later just because she's wearing the one of the horcruxes when she starts yeah. getting really, really, really bad. She's wearing like one of the horcruxes that made when the kids wore it. Ron flipped out. Like yeah. he lost it. Like he you don't keep your calm with some of these dark magic. Like that's why I'm like cursed items, like stay away from them. Because mm -hmm. if she was like even leaning a little bit grumpy, like she might have not been like a horrible person. But if you have a tiny bit of ego that is misplaced or a tiny bit of trauma that hasn't been worked through and then you're made to wear one of these cursed items your 
You're fucked. You're fucked. Yeah. It's going to take over <laughs> your entire everything. You're now evil. Yeah. No, exactly. So, yes, um, Magic in Real Life, which is Hermetics, uh, Stranger Things in Real Life, Plastic Masonry was me and my husband kind of talking about how the, um, yeah, masonry, like how it's in our everyday society. And then you have to know the story of Prometheus to understand all this. This is how we got our fire. It's an old Greek story of this. Um, black goo parasite coming to earth and they gave us fire in return for our enslavement so yeah oh, it. send it back i don't want it take it <laughs> we could have figured it out on our own isn't that the whole enoch thing like isn't that the whole you know they gave us all of this knowledge before we were able to come into this knowledge and all to the stars and root cutting and yeah and all of these things we were supposed to come into that on our own as the human experiment but because you yes. know the fallen angels were like no these women are hot we want to breed with them mm -hmm. we're, we're going to go and, and give them everything they need to know so they can take care of our children after we bail you know so yeah. like the idea is that we were you know we were given too much information prematurely and that that's like why mankind and earth is so effed up i don't i don't know if that's the truth but that's, that's no it. that's very well explained how everyone kind of thinks what happened the bad forces that be forced our um technological evolution kind of and i don't mean evolution the way you know <laughs> like, well, i'm not talking about i'm talking about like oh, darwinian or, evolution got it yeah, got it because darwin was a Apparently, I feel bad for Darwin too because Darwin himself said, "If this and this happened, then discredit my theory." And the things that he mentioned, they did happen. So even Darwin himself doesn't believe his theory based yeah. on like, like if he was alive now. now. <laughs> yeah, like it's really interesting. Um, Darwin mm. wouldn't even believe his theory because he proved it wrong, and they just don't tell that part. So I did a Christmas magic video, and it explains a lot more of Odin being Father Christmas, and then you have Loki always pretending to be Odin. So we have the Santa Claus character, and Santa is not Father Christmas. And if you watch Disney, they do cover this too on the new Santa Claus movie with Tim Allen. They're like, you have Odin, and then you have these bad versions of Santa Claus who are not Father Christmas. And then Narnia even covers Father Christmas. And it's not someone you idol. It's not someone you worship. It was just someone who came to give the children of Narnia the tools to fight with Aslan, the God Jesus type character. He was, mm -hmm. um, it's really interesting, but he was taken this father Christmas wasn't allowed to give us the rightful gifts and someone was pretending to be him. And that's usually this like Santa Claus bad character. Um, it's all about shapeshifters. It's all about, um, they're trying to pretend Myers. they're not. So uh, keep that in mind. Also Hecate is a character from um, the Scottish play Macbeth. And mm -hmm. to understand Macbeth, you have to know the story of Queen Mary um, the rightful Scottish queen who had her baby taken away from her and she was thrown in a tower. And then that baby is King James who changed the entire Bible. And um, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's making sense. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Check out my journey to truth episode about that vampires. Shout out to journey to truth, by the way, those, ha those guys happen to be our, our friends and our, our brothers in arms so we shout out to her that. i'm gonna be at the conference this year i'm so excited i might go i don't know i it's, it's kind of a it's just kind of, honestly it's just kind of like a you know scheduling thing like oh yeah I go hang so. out in in uh grafton illinois that place is beautiful i saw like, the pictures i'm so happy when we went there, it was like rainy. There's like it was beautiful weather. Uh, apparently, it was beautiful weather. And then we showed up for the conference, and it was a week of the ugliest, most just oppressive fog and rain and cold. And even the people that worked there were like, "This is, you know, this time of year is actually usually really nice." And it was really nice last week. And um, so yeah, it was like I couldn't wait to. I know get how out. to clear the sky of clouds. Let's just. It say was kind of Scottish vibes, honestly. It was. It was Scottish. 
in that moment. Like, were you there? It looks like this yeah, winter. the there. first year. Yeah. And I had, yeah, it was a travesty. It was you crazy. and I didn't go at the same time. Yes. We did. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The first year. Because you, that's right. You got, yeah. Yeah. How yeah. can I freaking forget? Please forgive me. No, no. <laughs> I want to go. Let's all party in Grafton, Illinois. Well, I might just show up. Are you going also? Are you going next year, Alexis? Are you going to be there? I mean, I have had a unique experience with this particular situation. So for me, it's just like, oh, well, I'm out of, it's out of my hands sometimes it feels like. It's like, you know what? We'll do what we can, you know? Yeah. If you go, if you go I'll go. I have plans. Like, I think next year scheduling was more focused around going and dealing with the eclipse in Texas is kind oh. of my mission for next Let's year. Let's go to Texas then. Yeah, so I would love. Let's do that. It's closer to you, anyways, for sure. But both both missions need to be done, and there's a lot of good vibes. I mean, to bring the people together, yeah. but also it also attracts the exact opposite at the same time. It is similar strength. It feels like so that polarization definitely happens. So it's weird. I get why we have to be on the internet now and like, hey, right. like slide. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking between the lines to each other, like on a text message, it's just like it's gotten to that point. And oh, yeah. I know at it's least we're not Queen Mary right now, but I know Queen Poor Mary Queen Mary. needed that help. She did, she needed the protection, and we're fixing all of this stuff. I truly believe what's going yes. on now is quite literally putting everything back into place really quickly that has been lied about for years and years. But and the King James thing that's who hit us. That was. The name of the people like on the police report. I know. No. Yes, it was. His no. last name was King and then first name James. And last we were just name like, King, James. Yeah. What? And then I went to St. Mary's Hospital. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Which was real close. It was the closest. It was. Yeah. Alexia, it was you didn't see it because you weren't there. But when I saw Alexis, like, her, her face was like it was jarring to see this you know demure beautiful girl who had just like you had your face smashed it was like shocking I was like stunned for I'm people like, who don't understand we get attacks I've been run off the road at 90 miles an hour I've had cars um that's horrible I've had cars uh what is it called like square box me in me and my husband in going like 95 miles an hour and there was a unmarked semi truck coming no. if we were going 95 he was closing in like he was going 115 yeah. and we had to turn our car into this huge like Ford F-150 to get in front of him we I don't know how we made it and the semi didn't hit us but he when we looked over, he was on where we were just moments before. So he would have hit us and he got off immediately after at the next intersection and he had no plates. And then this was a few months later after my door was smashed in, we opened the door and there was no one there, but it broke the frame. No, it's a new house. No, we don't have old houses that foundation break here in Arizona. It's a dry climate. That's something you deal with old hundred year old houses in like the Midwest. So uh, what Jenny is explaining here is Alexis was attacked um, while out, and it was very evident that she suffered damages. And quite literally, oh, no. the person broke her nose. was it broken? Oh yeah, yeah. And they, had, they convinced me to take me to hospital because they're like, "Listen, you could have smashed all the way through, like into your sinuses, so we have to scan you." And I was like, oh. "Sure," and I didn't want to collapse a sinus, but. <clears throat> That we saw fun. pictures. I, we saw pictures the other day, and I was like, "I gotta post these or something," because this is the scariest, the scariest ever. Like it's terrible. Yeah, people it wouldn't laugh at us, and people wouldn't laugh at this stuff if they knew that, like, we're being, we're trying very hard, and they can never get us because we're children of God, and like our power is so much we more than they can even play either. with. But they try and get us is like what I'm trying to say. Yes. So when you're getting in your car from a solitary location be careful <laughs> when you leave that location just watch yeah. and wait to go through a green light wait yes that's my advice <laughs> i got you girl i got you <laughs> oh, okay this one is going to be fun girls this is um 
we're going into Hogwarts and we're choosing where Harry's going to be. And you have four houses. I think it's okay. interesting and they don't really cover this too much, but the houses actually represent like elements and what element you work best with. So the Gryffindor house is going to be the work of fire or the plasma. It's not just elements. It's a state of matter. So Fire is plasma, which equals courage and chivalry, and that is going to be a Gryffindor aspect. If you are ambitious and cunning and resourceful, these aren't necessarily bad things. They're not. They're wonderful things, but ambition can be sold out to the highest bidder. So whenever you have ambition, it could be taken over and made into the dark arts really quickly. And that is Slytherin, which represents water and liquid motion. Um, you have Ravenclaw, who is eccentric and curious. And they're usually the smartest people because they're so curious. And they represent air or gas. And we see that referenced in their eagle, which is um, their school mascot. So Ravenclaw is going to be the smart air signs. And then we have Hufflepuff, good old Hufflepuff. I definitely would have had some Hufflepuff friends because they got that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the Hufflepuff people were, they were like the like um, they survived. Huff Hufflepuffs, like the original Hufflepuff woman was like a real she liked people that were had big hearts like she was all about the compassionate people yeah. and i love hufflepuff might be my elga favorite. hufflepuff and she was like the hufflepuff. best yeah she was like she has a really cool story so um justice loyalty patience and this is why they work with um the earth this is why they're in the greenhouses they can make things grow because they have the patience and i love hufflepuff so they have a little badger he's adorable team hufflepuff yeah, and yeah. they deal with earth and solid matter. So all of the, and whenever you're learning about magic, this is like one of the first things. We already covered protection. Always do your protection. Um, and then you have to bring in the elements because you can't create anything if you don't have all the elements elements of the word world. So for example, when I do my curing healing stuff, uh, I showed you rickyleaks.com. You can watch all the videos, but we start off with sea salt minerals. Step zero, do you have your sea salt minerals? And this is positive ionic trace minerals that allow your body to absorb stuff. And then you have mm -hmm. herbs. Shout out to Hufflepuff. These grow from the <laughs> ground. They need the light of the sun. They need water. Herbs are kind of a mixture of all the elements, really, because they are carbon mat matter. They need Everything. fire from the sun. They need all of the things. Oxidizers is air oxygen is going to kill all parasites so um chlorine dioxide hydrogen peroxide ozone these when they're in your body it just shows up as oxygen and oxygen corrodes metal which is why we use it to get rid of heavy metal and it kills the bad parasites but not the good parasites because the good bugs in our body they're not parasites because they're helping us they're eating they're breaking down our food they're breaking down some they of our stuff eating us what are they worms the good parasites what are the good parasites some of them actually are worms um they're just little critters almost think of like if you have a garden we utilize earthworms um, right. to break down the soil right and we do have some of this in our system and it's called good gut flora and okay. if you this is why we like fermentation and yogurts and kefir and sourdough because we're getting these good little buggies into our system and they're going to help us. They don't take from us. They take and give. It's a really good cohesive environment and they don't die from oxygen. So really, that's why I like my method so much is because you're not killing the gut flora unless you're doing like enemas. Then you always have to put stuff back in you because everything's being taken away. But... Mm. The, there's ways around it that you don't kill the good things. And if you do kill them, you just bring in more. So what? So, and then you clean up with carbon, charcoal. And to me, carbon is um, fire elements and earth because activated charcoal is the burning remnants, the burnt remnants of carbon stuff. And then you have zeolite, which is another carbon that came from a volcano. Then you have bentonite clay. So all of these things do help 
uh, removing the bugs from us and killing them. So I utilize all the elements in my basic formula. And this is why I laugh when people come with these hundred dollar parasite protocol. Like I think the famous parasite protocols that are out there by the doctors, they're like literally three or $400 for everything. And I'm like, you guys are so silly. Those aren't even the basic elements. Those, because basic elements is a substance that cannot be broken down into a si simpler substance by chemical means. An element is composed of atoms that have the same atomic number that is, each atom has the same number of protons in its nucleus as all other atoms in that element. So you cannot break this down even more simply. That's why it's so safe. That's why our bodies can absorb it quickly. Our bodies make them. That's why I like to do. But all of these popular cleanses are these big pharma medicines that are not basic elements. Fabendazole, I like Fabendazole, but it's not a basic element. It's a chemical compound ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, those are not God made. Those are made by men and they're still paying for big pharma. So yeah. that's why I always go back to the basic stuff God gave us in our world. I just got a little behind the scenes clip forever. Like a little bit, of, we're going to do like a little promo. <laughs> and would you say the Hufflepuff is our gut? Maybe that's our flora's in there. So our little Hufflepuff. Well, that's interesting bellies. to say because the Hufflepuff represents solid matter and our bodies are solid matter. They're also a light body because back to elements, a photon is a vibrating right. piece of light. Uh, every single element in matter is made from vibrating light. So there's an argument to be made. We're already vibrating light bodies. We are not even physical solid ones. But for this talk, let's say our body is the physical solid. That is the Hufflepuff and your courage inside of you. We've all had to be courageous at some point in our life and it shakes you. It's not easy to do, but you do feel a fire through you when you yes. have to be courageous, either, either leaving the man who's beating you or leaving Aww. the job, which is abusive and taking up your life or getting rid of the friend group who is not the best, whatever. That is Just doing bad magic. Those naughty wizards. Yeah, no. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is a little bit of understanding what the houses represent. And you still, obviously, Harry was able to choose which house he wanted. Right. Um, we'll be covering this screen a lot while the kids learn more. But what are the kids taught at school? And there is a book called... Um, so much. The History of Magic, and it was written with J.K. Rowling, and it's the real life science behind the subje subjects that are taught at Hogwarts, Transfiguration, Charms, Potions, History of Magic, Defense Against the Dark Arts, Astronomy, and Herbology. Um, I think the, we should open a Hogwarts. Uh, <laughs> I think we should, honestly. Like, I'm not even... A it does. We're doing it. We're doing it right now. I mean, really, we've already covered so many of these things in our videos. Um, herbology, literally, I have step one on herbs and how to get started with that. I would love to learn more. I would love for seeds that we can't even, you know, get our hands on right now. But herbology is wonderful. Um, astronomy. I think everyone should know astronomy as well as they know the astrology because astronomy is just like if you're lost in any part of the world and if you know the heavens, you will always find your way home. That is quite literally this. We're in the Christmas spirit right now. I love the wise, the story of the wise men saving the baby. And they literally found not only did they find the baby using the heavens, but they were supposed to kill the baby. The three wise men were like kings and they were set off to do a hit on this new baby that was out. I didn't know that. I just Aww. found it out. They were not supposed to do what they did. And through <laughs> the heavens, uh, an angel came to them and said, this baby, you cannot kill it. It's going to be like transformative. So they actually brought frankincense, myrrh, um, hysop to the baby. Frankincense, by the way, keeps astral parasites away. One yeah. million percent. I have a frankincense essential oil and frankincense resin. And I, I swear, it. anytime things get things get a little dicey, you just blast that sucker and you're just like, it just 
Oh, it's so strong. I always have something. I put it in my belly button. It's so good. And it's not really an herb. It's more like um, how tree sap. It's kind of like a sap. Yeah, it comes from a tree. Yeah. It's really cool. I never knew that too um, until like, you know, learning about this. Uh, Defense Against the Dark Arts. Prayers. To me, prayers, I am affirmations, um, bringing light to dark situations, which light is just truth. Um, Jesus per the Bible, that other fiction book I'm allowed to talk about because it's fiction and this podcast about is about fiction books. The Bible says Jesus equals truth. So if you bring truth to the situation, dark cannot survive. Mm -hmm. Um, history of magic. It's a really good book. Uh, they don't even cover the basic history of magic at Hogwarts. And I think that's very interesting because once you learn more about Hogwarts legacy, once you learn more about the real history of Merlin, you, once you realize that Nicholas Flamel was real, they weren't taught this at Hogwarts. They never went over this. So the history of magic, even at Hogwarts, I can tell has been censored because these kids can't get basic information. Um, that's why like half the movie is trying to find out who Nicholas Flamel is. If they the actually restricted had section the restricted of the library. Section. Why is there a restricted that? section, you guys? Like that's <laughs> bonkers to me. That is ridiculous. Yeah. The Ministry of Magic was probably behind it because at that point they were already, I think, yeah. in, infiltrated. But has anybody noticed that they cel celebrate Christmas in Harry Potter? For sure, and Halloween. It's a Jesus story, but it's like it's, it's real. Something to think about something to think about. Happy, Happy Christmas, Christmas, Harry. <laughs> Happy Christmas. <laughs> no, there are Christian. That's huge to bring into the. There's Muslims and there's Christianity, so they're still living amongst our world with our history, which is very interesting. <laughs> the teachers are like, we still need some time off. And so. <laughs> right. Let's, let's go home, break. please. I don't want to deal with these damn kids anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then we have potions, which is basically chemistry. A lot of the stuff they talk about is real. I remember um, Snape when he's trying to grill Harry. He's like, what happens when you get wormwood? Which is like my number one herb I always work with in uh, the spring of Asperdell which is another just sleeping agent, what happens when you put them together? And it's like, yeah, you're going to fall asleep. <laughs> so it's really interesting to hear the potions. I'm like, I work with that. I work with that. Like, I I know that. <laughs> and it's something that people can learn. Um, charms. I want to talk about charms because to me, charms is utilized in this world as debate and political science. Um, Barack Obama, he was very charming. And if you like him or not, he is a wonderful speaker. And it is a learned trait. It is a magical trait that a lot of these people who went to Harvard, Ivy League schools, right? it's what they're taught. Because if you can charm people, you don't have to be smart. You don't have to be good. You don't have to be anything. You can trick people into falling stuff for being charming. And I can see that in our political stage a lot. <laughs> well, it's like kind of the idea of like using your physical body as a physical sigil. So if you notice a lot of these really like the cult of personality people like Obama and people that came before him, they do a lot with the hands. If you look, they're almost forming like mudras with the hand. And this is how they direct and channel this energy to charm the masses. But it is when your physical body becomes like, uh, you know, you're, you're becoming the physical charm. And so I use enchantments around my home all the time. Mm -hmm. Like I have charms, like uh, examples of charms would be things like, you know, dream catchers or even the organized pyramids that everybody uses these yes. days. Like these things are, you know, they, they are a certain shape. They have a certain configuration, composition, and they do their job. We, they have a job to do. So I'm like I runes, runes falls under that category too, right? I think so. Oh yeah, I think so. Well, because it's like a sigil, you know. It's right. they're, they're sigils, and they they in, in within that sigil, it's like a, a language. It's in, it's a codex imbued within uh, your physical object, uh, a symbol, a sigil, what have you. So yeah, the charms in the political science. That's I I wouldn't have made that connection. Um, I. I always wanted to cover this, and you girls will understand. Wanda Vision is um i hadn't done it yet 
I don't know if anyone's watched it. It's an amazing I, show. I'm going to ruin it if you haven't seen it. That's okay. So, do it. Go for it. I'll never watch it. Basically, it's a very short series, and it explains um, how masons use runes and sigils wonderfully so basically you learn that wanda is accidentally because she is very sad she accidentally put an entire town in a coma and is making the entire town bend to her will to make this like perfect stars hollow type town because she's very sad so did it happen? Was the sadness brought about by in, in, interference with her children, by the way? Was, were, was she interfered with? Was it her children? Her love. Oh, goodness. Her love died. Um, oh, okay. So it was a partner. All right. It got it. Partner. Her partner was taken from her. her. Her brother was just killed before that. Her parents died in Russia. She's had trauma and she hasn't worked through it. So she makes it everyone's problem. <laughs> I and see. the Olsen okay. twins are her older siblings. Yeah, so. exactly. And the Olsen right. twins are her older sisters. And she looks like M -K her. Mary, Kate, and Ashley. MK and Ashley. Yeah. Oh, wow. uh, it's sad. It's really, really sad. So um, we realize that what she did and what she ends up doing is she. Pl uh, we learn that if you place runes on your creation at the northeast southwest corners of a creation that you make like a town you can control that town so we all have driven into small town usa and you see if you see on the screen the sign with all of the lions club and knights of columbus and Rotary. all these little like runes yeah when you enter towns at the north, south, east, and west, you have literally tags of these Masonic groups that own the town at each entrance. So Wanda puts her runes outside of these, so she controls the town. But basically, they're showing us before Wanda controlled the town, Eagles Club, Knights of Columbus, this thing over here, they had their runes. And that's why we talk about Mason groups and these trades groups um being dangerous because they're putting they're showing their hand they're putting their sigils on the town and they can control the town now so like this is a real life thing and i love how wandavision explained it yes have you seen the new signs that says free and accepted no um, it's yeah they're new the masonic sign is Free and accepted Masons is the new sign I've seen. Weird. <laughs> I don't know if I should be saying this, but and they put I mean, their own sign out. So I'm like, oh, I've never seen weird. the sigil like that. But interesting. That's interesting. Just, just add a little influence on top. Like, yeah, exactly. free and accepted. It's post, it's past tense. It has happened. You're, you're it has happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, very interesting. Uh, okay, we come back to Hikate. Just be aware, there's probably three to five different ways. With every big uh, decision in life, you don't have just one or two ways. And the devil tries to make it seem like you only have one or two ways to handle each situation. And in reality, an intersection at least has four different ways. And it's probably even more than that. So that's why I tell people, don't don't fall for the first trap. This happens a lot in spirituality and everyone gets made fun of because people fall for the traps. Um, left and right. So just go further, keep your mind open. Don't fall for any one story that's been told by a man because chances are it's only half truths and keep your mind open and just keep your eyes out for all scenarios for everything. Yeah. Um, we kind of already covered this elite schools. Um, in one of my Journey to Truth episodes, I show how there are seven sisters, which are seven female colleges, um, Ivy League colleges, and they literally have covens. Like uh -huh. if you look it up, seven sisters, colleges, covens, Simpsons. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, they even made fun Casual. of it on a symptom. Symptoms. symptoms, yeah, symptoms. And they're like, "Hey, if you uh, if you've gone to one of these schools, then you totally understand that there are covens at these schools." And Hillary Clinton went to them, and they're 
totally about Greek life. It's just really, really weird. So when we think of Greek fraternities, this is where we see the beginning stages of Freemasonry in our world. And it is very much using witchcraft, but it's only being taught to rich people. So mm -hmm. these, these are real. They're very real. Um, did you probably, either of you guys get stuck in a sorority at any point? Did that happen to either of you? That no. they convinced you for five minutes? No. Oh, but they got was, me for like a year. And then I was like, ooh. what the hell are you doing? They're weird. Wow. Yeah, wow. it was great. How old were you? It was my first year at university. I, had, I hadn't even turned 18 yet. And mm -hmm. they're like, they're like, all right, now into the basement and do everyone's wearing this. And all of a sudden everything changes. And you're like, oh. It was always really interesting. I I was never recruited or anything, but I had I, you know knew a bunch of people that that Greek life and what have you. The everything from the way that you wore your hair to your nail color to the fit to the aesthetic, yeah. the way that you spoke, the what you ate, everything needed to be uniform, which is in a cult tradition. Covens yeah. do that's what they do. So you know you have to be your family now. Damn it. <laughs> Yeah, the military but, too. Military is probably the most well-known fraternity. Um, yeah, that it it utilizes it still utilizes all the basic acts of Ooh, magic. They have army, army which covers the land. They have the air force which covers the sky. They have navy which cut and coast guard which cover the waters, um, space command or whatever it's called space force is covering to me plasma because if you understand what space is it's more of a ether and ether is plasma so that's why when you see like elon musk doing all the crazy um rockets when these rockets hit the ether it looks like water is rippling um yeah. And it's quite literally because he's dealing with the plasma. So I can see that the military is utilizing these magical things uh, very much. So I just feel like it doesn't have to be this terrible, destructive force that it is. Like all of these things, like the way that yeah. the whole thing is mapped out, why? And I we know why is because of the parasitic matrix infrastructure and the people that are managing this whole operation happen to be <laughs> evil. They happen to be, they want power. They want to, you know, hurt the children. They want to hurt innocents, take shots at God through the, the most innocent. But I'm going to tell you, like, realistically, in my perfect world, we have a military. We have a complex that, yeah. that manages the, the earth, the sea, the sky, all of our domains magically too. Not yeah. just, you know, I, I don't believe that the occult, you know, it, that it's a bad thing. That's me personally. It's the management is completely ass backwards and inverted. And that's the problem. Like I would love it. If, if things were done right, it would be awesome, but it's not it being done right. right. Let's, I say we just create a hit squad and just take out, you know, that, if I won, if I came into like a ton of money, y'all never see me on social media ever again. I, that's what I'll be doing. I'll be going away, crafting my hit squad. We're going international. We're taking people out. That's what we're yeah. doing. Yeah. And I, and okay. So if you're thinking of that as just a mother, <laughs> you know, a normal person in America, then imagine what people who do have money are doing. I know, but it's like, come on, guys, chop, chop. <laughs> <laughs> I will I'll say there is, an, okay, we haven't talked about this, and it does explain what Jenny just said. Seven, there are seven Harry Potter books. There are seven subjects that are taught at the school. My series of seven is when I cover fictional books and they all have to deal with seven and the reason is seven is a master number that like a completion number it takes you seven years to complete anything that's worth doing the seven year war i personally remember seven years ago and hearing about that's when i first heard about all this stuff like there's been instances in my life where yes i knew weird stuff all throughout life but like seven years ago is when wikileaks like really was told and understand by the world. And seven years ago is when Donald Trump, like him or not, trust him or not, took the stage seven years ago. So we are actually coming up right now on that seventh year completion mark for, I think, the biggest witch hunt in modern day history. Agreed. Something to keep in mind. 
One thing um, I loved, I was like, you know what? Before we take advice from anybody, I just want to see your parasite cleanse protocol for the last six to six months to a year, and then maybe I'll yeah. listen to you. Exactly. Like, that'll be the new thing. Like, oh, hold on, no more words. Hold oh, on. Well, I was just, I was telling, I was, I was talking. I've been talking about this a lot, but like, I don't have any. Like, I'm not even attracted to people. Any, I mean, I. I Ever since I've done my own parasite cleanses and my detoxing, I can like smell people's toxicity and I, you can smell and feel that they're completely, uh, they have all these parasites in them. So that, like my desire to sort of date or be physical with anybody has gone down like 98%. I have like no desire whatsoever because everybody is full of parasites. And that was a side effect of my detox protocol that I was not anticipating my sex drive to kind of, it's not that my sex drive went away. It's no. just that nobody has really done the work. And so nobody, I'm not going to let anybody near my temple or inside my temple. If you haven't cleansed, like your buddy, you're full of worms. Get the hell away from me. <gasps> Josh Hartnett. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, so um, does he look I know, like he's writhing with worms in this? Let's see. Hmm. This whole movie is about worms taking over sure. the first responders of a town. So oh, the first God. person that these alien parasites take over, which is smart, is the yeah. first responders, the, the ambulance, the cops, and the people watching our children. So oh you find these kids find out about the body snatchers. We've done several videos on this. And they realize, okay, the teachers are the parasites. And they're like, okay, if you're not a parasite, sniff, they call it caffeine. We would be having people drink like chlorine dioxide, basically. Right, right. So they're like, here, if you're not, if you're not a parasite, you know, have this antidote. Okay. And yeah. she doesn't do it, basically. She's like, oh, no, all the other kids do it, and they're fine. Like, it's not great, but they're fine. And then she wouldn't. So she ends up being... She she's outs herself because she can't have the antidote that kills the parasites. So you realize she's one of the parasites. Um, and she was that. close with them the whole time. So this is something that people have to look out for. And the weird cast, like the fact, if you just watch this movie, it's ridiculous. Usher, baby Usher, okay. baby Elijah Wood, Josh Hart. Baby, like, baby Elijah Wood. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen it. Everybody uh, should watch the faculty. Movie. It's excellent. It's a great movie. It's wonderful. So yeah, that's basically it. They make all the people that they work with do a parasite cleanse. And if you can't, well, you can't sit with us. You can't sit with us. <laughs> okay, Sorry. so really quick, let's talk about this. People don't realize, um, if you noticed when I was showing all my stuff, Journey to Truth, our first video we did was about vampires and how they mm -hmm. want you to think they're big, scary reptiles, but really they're vampires. So we meet Professor Quirrell in Harry Potter. The very first thing he tells us is, hey, Harry, nice to meet you. I'm just in town getting a book on vampires. And we quickly learn that he is um, keeping the Dark Lord alive using the darkest of dark occult magic. And he, in order to keep... Voldemort, the horrible, horrible Dark Lord, which we'll talk more about in future videos. Um, the only way he can keep him alive is by drinking the blood of a unicorn. Uh, this very well could be how unicorns died out. Unicorns are not that weird. Considering that we have platypus, and those are real things. Narwhal whales, those are real things. Rhinoceroses are weird. Hippos are weird. All of these things that are real in our life are weirder than the idea of a unicorn basically. So mm -hmm. there is question like what happened to the unicorns? Were they eaten by vampires? And then after there were no more unicorns, they started doing this to children because the idea is that it's such a pure, innocent blood. It will mm -hmm. keep someone alive, even if they were from an inch from death. And that is why the vampire is trying to find the philosopher's stone this entire time. Um, and they tell us right away. So they don't Not mention so vampirism so, uh, except so. for like this. Less than subtle, kind of subtle nod towards adrenochrome and yes. the whole feeding, you know, the unicorn, the idea of the baby blood and unnatural long life. Yeah. Right exactly. in your face. But I have heard from a friend of mine who, who has encountered a unicorn. So I was like, okay, there's still a couple kicking around out there. So I was convinced just because it was her. And I was like, oh, all right. Like, 
Thank you. <laughs> I've also heard that every single horse is technically a unicorn. We're just in too low of a dimension. We can't see their horn. I can't oh. see that. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Oh, oh, I have. There's an orca unicorn on this. <laughs> we saw today. <laughs> they made an, an orca, orca unicorn. unicorn. No yeah. way. Yeah. And I've never seen that. And I was like, oh, wow. We saw it right before the video. Oh. Like, oh. They there. snuck a the unicorn in there. The orcas are working overtime right now. I think they just terrorized another yacht over this past week. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Good for them. I love the orcas. I'm so happy. Oh, that is so cool. Um, okay, so really quickly, uh, they we're just finishing this up, year one. They have to do all these trials to try and kill the vampire guy. Um, mm -hmm. The liar, if you know Greek mythology, which... If you're learning about any of this stuff, it's definitely time to look at your Greek mythology. Um, the liar keeps away a lot of demons, the frequency that the harp makes, basically. So the three-headed dog known as Severus, um, you can put, like, yes, he is put to sleep by the liar. So they do show this really quickly in the movies. It's explained in the books. That's how they keep um, Fluffy, the big dog, asleep. And... Oh, I didn't even put this in there. In the it's not in the movies, but it's in the books. Dumbledore explains that ma uh, music is the highest form of magic, and they don't talk about it, and it's underrated. So what? music is going to be like the best way to protect and harmonize chaotic frequencies, mm -hmm. and if you can get people in harmony, um, just through like playing the harp, people will be able to calm down and think more rationally. It's really interesting. And I also I think you can utilize like the frequency of of like either a heart, some kind of a stringed instrument. I'm sure back I'm sure at some point somebody has created like the harp to end all harps. And I really do think like you can almost it's almost like a study through the scaling of frequencies and like I when I was really little, I like imagined this genie um, uh, demonstrating how human beings can phase, can scale. They can become really, really large, like, like giants or titans, or they can scale all the way down to a molecular level based on the chords of this particular harp. So this was like how I learned at a really young age about scaling frequencies was, but he showed me using some kind of an instrument and, but wow. he would show me when I, when I do this and I got really, really small and I was like, okay. And then it str strummed another one and I became like really big again. So it's, I even think that the Magi's utilize like the chords from the harps, the stringed instruments as a means of like entering into a, some kind of a magical space for whatever magical work or means. Yes. So, okay. On that note, I was not going to talk about this, but Ant- This always happens. We always do. <laughs> I know. I knew it would happen. And this might be two videos just for it to be easy for people. But um, basically on Ant-Man, it is the government utilizing frequencies that can make someone very, very small or very, very big. Mm -hmm. And it- we, in our sector, what we do, exorcists, you hear a lot of people who were abducted. And in their abduction experience, they see praying mantis. We've all heard yeah. this, right? Mantis beans. That's who is doing um, the operations on many abductees, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so let's look up praying mantis parasite. Everyone sends oh, me this video. This is the video one. I get sent probably three times per day. And it's not just one <laughs> praying mantis. It's everyone sends it to you. <laughs> everyone. I get this one. I get the wasp with the parasite coming out of his butt. I get the bear walking in the water and there's like a 10 foot long tapeworm coming out of his butt. I oh. hate opening my phone. It's just. <laughs> I hate opening my phone. <laughs> oh, God. I do. I'm so scared because it's always like this. But basically the idea is. Um, there's a bunch of praying mantis videos where the parasite comes out of a praying mantis and the praying mantis is dead. It was never alive. It was the parasite that was controlling the praying mantis. So back to what Jenny was saying, if you can make someone very, very small, and if you can put an MIT robot inside of a praying mantis, you don't need to abduct anyone. You just need to make a five-year-old be very small Send in a praying mantis, 
have an operation done, and then have the child be returned to a normal size. This is how I'm pretty Just sure probably. abductions are happening. How nasty. How, like, I don't Do people even have the stomach for this? Like, that's why you have to clean your stomach first. Right, right. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, yes. Devil's snare, deadly fun, except it dies in the sun. Just bring in sunlight. And the devil's snare, it just means if the devil's got you, if you're in a sad place, if you're thinking those thoughts, bring in light and keep calm. Do not keep freak out. Um, this will kill the devil's snare around you. Um, Hermione goes through a logic puzzle to break one of the little potion um, trials to get into this place. And she's like, oh, this has nothing to do with magic. This is all about logic. Logic is not, not everyone has logic. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how she won the potions. And then Harry has to jump on a broomstick and grab the oldest looking key, which this whole scene reminds me of the search of the Holy Grail. Because mm -hmm. if everyone remembers like Indiana Jones, which he had a guess which cup was the chalice of Jesus. And there's beautiful, beautiful chalices, the same way that Harry has these beautiful golden keys to choose from, but it's not going to be the prettiest ornate chalice. Jesus probably drank from like a wooden cup. So yeah. even though you have temptation of riches to choose from, uh, you, it's probably the oldest broken down key or chalice that needs to be used. So that's um, interesting. And then of course it's a huge chess match. It's the most beautiful chess scene probably done in history. Um, mm -hmm. And we do have a chess master on our <laughs> uh, world stage right now making these type of moves. So understanding mm -hmm. the chess board, understanding the game that needs to be played is really important. And you have a lot of fake people who will be like, they're so full of fear. They're like, don't play the game. Just stop playing the game. And in Jumanji, you have to finish the game. You have to finish the game. Yeah. No one wants to finish the game. It gets scary and you just want to stop. But if you've already started playing, you have to finish. Yes. When you're done yeah. playing, you never have to play again for sure. But if you're still playing, if the game is still going, keep going. That movie scared the shit out of me when I was just the idea. Like when, when the little boy got sucked into the game, I started crying because I, I couldn't imagine. And like, oh no, yeah. poor it's child. Poor How many child. of us has that happened to? Mm -hmm. Very, Sorry. very interesting. Okay. Um, really quick things I just wanted to cover. Snake up until this point has been seen as the bad guy this entire time in the first movie. They thought it was Snape who was the vampire and they have like this whole little right. conspiracy theory. They're wrong and they realize they're wrong and it wasn't Snape who was the bad guy. It was like the quiet, nice teacher. I'm cool with the assholes. Everyone I've met in this, <laughs> this whole thing has known me as an asshole. That is where authenticity lies. It's when people are nice and overly nice that I'm like, I don't trust you. Like, it's mm -hmm. just tail old as time. And Snape, he was an asshole from the day one, but he was trying to help the child Harry live. And it was the really nice, innocent professor, Coral, who was ended up being the vampire or the mm -hmm. conduit for the vampires. So mm -hmm. um, we'll go into Snape in later episodes. He's very important, um, very hard conversation to have, especially when he loved Lily. And it's so crazy to think that Aunt Petunia knew Snape. Oh, yeah, I know. She oh, knew yeah. about the mentors and everything. Mm hmm absolutely ridiculous and I'm sure that's really scary to think of so um things to keep in mind Donald Trump is a chess master uh the way that the chess tournament even went needed to utilize a sacrifice Ron sacrificed himself to win um thank goodness he didn't die but it's all an illusion so get over it and you still have to play that's like the whole idea of Jumanji um mm -hmm. Yeah, anything else from there? Nothing else from there. Oh, at the very end of the first book, Dumbledore, I love it. He goes, um, you know, we're trying to keep the events of what happened to secret. So naturally the whole school knows. And like, <laughs> this is perfect because all these secret societies and stuff, 
everyone knows about them. Like everyone knows something different about the fraternities because they have to tell us everything they do. So they have to tell us in order to get our consent, which means it's like the worst kept secret that's still called a secret. Um, and I think Dumbledore kind of pays homage to that fact. Yeah. Keeping, keeping secrets. Um, something really quick. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but it is something that, I mean, if we're talking about this, we need to talk about it. So back with the, what is masonry and all that fun jazz in the real world, we have the Scottish Rite and the York, York Rite. So up until you're about a 32, 33 degree Mason for Scottish Rite. And when you are about the 13th degree, so you're basically at these top steps, um, you are what is it called? You're then contacted by a Shriner. Okay. I do not like the Shriners, but they are, were naturally supposed to be a good thing when they were made. I 100% know for a fact they have been taken over by the bad guys. We all know Shriners probably best from the mummy. The oh, mummy yeah. is this little guy who is teaching her and he is like the head contributor for a library, mm. a museum, all the artifacts, anyone who's going to learn about the secret stuff, he's going to know who knows everything. He is a Shriner. He wears the cute little pillbox red hat later. Okay. And the idea mm. is that the Shriner of society meets, uh, he knows the Magi. And it's through the Shriner that we meet the Magi. And the Magi are protecting this ancient, ancient knowledge. And the Shriners are supposed to be helping them keep this secret. So, Dr. Bay, we are part of an ancient secret society. For over 3,000 years, we have guarded the city of the dead. We have sworn, we are sworn at manhood to do any and all of our power to stop the high priest Im Im Imhotep from being reborn into this world. So the Shriners and the um, Magi in the mummy are actually really good guys for that. And the Magi is the sexy guy with. <laughs> oh yeah. That movie made me unsure of my sexual orientation. Oh my god. Literally oh. everybody oh. in that class is a pretty I was gonna say everybody in this movie. The mummy's hot, Brandon Fraser's at his prime, the girls. Oh my god. The Nox in a Moon. I mean, one that I love the Mummy trilogy. There and there's a lot of truth in there, hidden in there. So much truth. It is. So this is gonna be kind of what the fraternity should have been and we are seeing it in the past so maybe the um antiquity sector was safe and up until maybe like the late 1800s is what i kind of can gather so um that's where the magi and the shriners come into play so you will be met by one of these shriners trying to get you so even it's basically even more than Freemasonry. It's the Shriner. So it's supposed to be, in theory, the pinnacle of the epitome of like enlightenment. But in reality, it's just um, embezzlement and money laundering. And the way they get their money is by childhood cancer. Well, <laughs> the funny thing is, I've cured childhood cancer in like a bunch of people, and it's really easy. So, what are the Shriners doing that they are stealing millions of dollars and not actually curing children. To me, that's child sacrifice. Mm -hmm. um, if you are withholding the cure to children and using all the funds. Yeah. So obviously it's not a good organization anymore, even right. if it was supposed to be at one time, but we just have to cover it. Um, what else did I want to go over? Yeah, the Shriners gets weird because it like all goes back to the Arab states. And I'm not saying Arab states are bad, but it just gets really dicey because like they do use the black cube in their like symbols. And that just freaks me out. So because I have that fear of it and I'm like, whoa, I just don't look at it. So then you go into the Magi, Magus. And if you look up Magus, 
you're like if you anyone goes to Facebook right now and writes in Magi or Magus, you're gonna see, oh my god, Donald Trump is definitely a Satanist because there is a MAGA as the fifth. Yeah. Like um I don't know, like the fifth decree of Satanism is called MAGA. And it's like, well, first of all, that's a title and they all have the same titles. So oh. that's like saying, they're saying that all magicians are satanic and every other order has to deal with these magicians as well. Everything goes back to Odin and Merlin. So no, if you actually knew the story of Merlin, he was so different than everyone else in the whole entire world that was doing magic because Merlin was baptized. And people don't realize that part of the story. Um, so Merlin's magic is this ancient, amazing magic that has been utilized all over the world. And whenever we talk about like Halloween Town, um, hold on here. Okay, so I did a video, Halloween through November, through the 5th of November. And this covers like right November before Christmas and Halloween town and up to the gunpowder plot. And it's basically understanding that there was this beautiful, very rare magic that was baptized through Merlin. He helped King Arthur's court. Every other magic at that time was actually really bad. It was sacrificial. It was the dark old gods with a little g magic that we're all aware of being kind of scary mm. so it's understandable that people were scared of this magic but like if you understand um the entire ep the what is it called halloween town um uh, the agatha the the old grandma she is merlin's niece remember i tell you guys it's all about niece and nephews it's not about your child or grandchildren it's about the niece and nephews. So Agatha on Halloween Town was Merlin's niece and she got all of his magic. And these evil Calabar cabal people are trying to get this hidden Merlin magic. Same thing goes with Hogwarts Legacy, which we're gonna learn about more. It's all about trying to stump out the actual good magic that Merlin was um, performing, which is really interesting. Yes, I liked that part. The, the ancient magic that's the ancient magic just this one kid could see wisps of and everyone else is like we don't know <laughs> yeah that's the only magic i'm interested in learning is the yeah. one that they had to get like this random 15 year old because no one else could see that kind of magic so it's very interesting and that's how rare this good magic is so it is interesting to know that um okay really quickly the last book the second book um, I only have one page on it. I have nothing to say about sure, this. Book. Not all books are good. <laughs> <laughs> she hates this book, you guys. This is her. I hate it, but it, they they cover a lot of important stuff, which we're really quickly gonna glaze over right now. Um, this is the very first book that we learn about Horcruxes. We realize that this evil wizard back in the forties made a way that he could live forever and it's dangerous and there's a cursed book involved um <laughs> someone do i don't know someone take this okay <laughs> Dude, is this the part where we talk about how much we hate dobby Yes, you can talk about how dobby the work he is this fake at so this house elf who is i think had some kind of a personality disorder and derive yes. some kind of sick satisfaction from sabotaging poor Harry Potter over and over again. But he was revered as a hero. And it's like, I would have punted that little house elf into next Tuesday for what he did. Um, intercepting mail. Like, do you know that that's illegal little guy? <laughs> do you know that's illegal? He, everyone, everyone in this movie handles every situation wrong. The house elf, he knew that, like, yes, Harry shouldn't go to school because the house elf it does belong to the Malfoys. The Malfoys are a dark family. He knew stuff was being planned. He, he, I get it. He wanted to save the little boy. He does it the wrong way, though. So um, he should have, like, gone to Dumbledore and he should have said, hey, this is happening. And Dumbledore should have, like, handled it better. Maybe picked up Harry instead of 
you know, going to the station. The kid, he puts a enchantment so the kids can't even get into Hogwarts that year. Um, the kids are stupid 12 year olds. They should have just like when they realized they couldn't get into the platform nine and three quarters, they should have been like, you know what? The smartest well-equipped wizards are inside of platform nine and three quarters. They're definitely going to get out. Let's go chill in the car. No, they steal the car. They have muggles see them. I get why Snape is mad. Oh my God. They tr crash into this tree that could like, oh my gosh. It's just I'm like, low. they break a wand, which wands are hundreds of dollars. Like it's just one thing after another. And then it doesn't even get better. And then the school starts getting taken over by this evil guy. And you see enemies of the air beware written in blood. And there's a kitty cat who had to be petrified because she saw it. And it's yes, terrible. The next day, the school should have shut down. You see enemies of the air beware. You're like, oh, no, we have a bunch of half-breed children. Let's send everyone home. End of story. No, they didn't. They kept the kids. Did the parents even know what was going on? Oh my God. And then <laughs> Hermione's not there the entire episode and she yes. had to realize that there's serpents in the pipes. So she's like <laughs> dealing true. with like, oh my gosh. And when we think of people being turned into stone and things like this, we have to think of the old Greek myths. And who's the lady who turns everyone to stone? Medusa. Medusa. Okay, so Medusa is a huge character. Rocky Horror Picture Show is about... Um, space aliens coming and they have the ability to turn humans into stone but they first want to rape the family of the Eisenhowers to get that entire bloodline to be because they heard that there may or may not be a prophecy on the children of the Eisenhowers so they're like oh we'll mess with your DNA and we'll make it unclean little do they know it never works through grandchildren it works through aunts and uncles and nieces and nephews so even if they did ruin that bloodline they still got the wrong Eisenhowers Narnia Narnia you have the evil witch and the evil witch is turning everyone to stone and oh, it's yeah. the breath of Aslan who is kind of this like Jesus God character who brings them out of the stoned state so we see that serpent very much being utilized in the basilisk for this movie. And I mean, they have a teacher who is unqualified. Like I said, history, travel channel, fake ass teacher who is unqualified, but he's all talk and no action. So you have Professor Lockhart teaching the children and he, thank God, is outed for being a fraud because you can never hide from truth and it will catch up with you. But the, the this was the guy that was like, Watching over your kids. It's just ridiculous. His spell, his memory, because his only thing that he was really good at was making a, a good memory charm. So he was able to convince all these witches and wizards of the era that they hadn't um, performed any of these magical feats. And he was like, you forgot that you ever did it. And then he was, that's how he was able to like take credit for all these things that he did. And then in the, yeah. in the book or the movie, the spell backfires and so he forgets everything and i just thought that was like great poetic justice like he became a a subject of his own uh it backfired memory. on him that's karma in, at its finest yes um, and the the people who do practice magic they do talk about that like be careful what you cast because it can come back to you you know so yes very very true what um, is this with the flying pizza my so goodness. Rick and Morty, um, very controversial, but it's one of those things like the Simpsons, Futurama, yeah. South Park that they tell you what's going on. It's a mission. Yeah, exactly. They have a they have an episode where alien parasites implant memories into your head. So oh, even no. though you know that they're not real, like a big giant duck can obviously not be a real thing. They implant memories, false memories into your mind. So they realize, oh my gosh, these are alien parasites that are taking over. We have to kill them. It's really hard for the people to do because you love them. They become your best friends, but you can tell that they're alien parasites because you don't have any bad memories. Again, why I'm not cool with like super sweet people 
because quite literally that's a sign of an alien parasite because you don't have any bad memories with them, but your real friends, your real family, we can think, Oh, my sister pissed me off when she did this. Oh, they, you don't have any bad memories with the fake aliens. They're so sweet, but they're the alien parasite. So it's a really interesting video or episode because you feel for the family because they have to kill. They have to kill one. Remember that scene. Very interesting. So disappoint your friends and family just once in a while, just yeah. to you're make real. sure. Remind them, I'm not a parasite. <laughs> I'm a real person. And that's exactly. why we have that's why we have problems. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So pretty much that is the importance of, oh my gosh, no. How do I stop it? Wow. Stop. Sharing. Oh, here. There you go. Oh, <laughs> hello, ladies. Hi. We're done. That's it. <laughs> wow. Can we do this again soon? We have yes, to do we have more books. For yes. So we so, did one and two, and so that means five more, really. <laughs> Three yeah. and four is going to be long. Those cover a lot of bases. That might be two episodes just right there, but um, we'll we'll do this even if it takes past the new year. It'll be super.